Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our 2021 San Diego County Kickoff to College and Career Readiness. My name is Tanya Bulet, and I am the Counseling Coordinator for the San Diego County Office of Education. I'm so excited to have so many of you here today to support this important initiative. Before we get started, we want to acknowledge that this program is taking place that this program is taking place virtually throughout the unceded territory of California, home to nearly 200 tribal nations. As we begin this event, we acknowledge and honor the original inhabitants of our various regions. A land acknowledgement is a critical step towards working with native communities to secure meaningful partnerships and inclusion in the stewardship and protection of their cultural resources and homelands. I'm currently leading this event from East County, San Diego, which is on the traditional unceded territory of the Kumeyaay culture. Let's take a moment to honor these ancestral grounds that we are collectively gathered upon and support their silence and strength that all indigenous people have shown worldwide. Thank you. So why are we here today and why a kickoff event and why college and career readiness? Well, with all that has occurred over the last year and a half, we know that the social and emotional well-being of our students, staff, and families is and has been a priority and a top concern. As a collective, we have all endured challenges both professionally and personally. I know that when prioritizing our work as school counselors, the college and career domain of our practice, no matter what level you're at, can often be a challenge to fit in especially last year when trying to navigate this work remotely. But school counselors in San Diego County did not use that as an excuse. Your creativity to think outside the box, your flexibility when systems and policies kept changing, and your commitment to your students, your colleagues, and your profession as school counselors were evident in so many ways, and there's so much to recognize and celebrate. We know that for many students, the possibility of going to college or having a career seems to only be a dream. How can we change that mindset? How can we support our most vulnerable students through the process? And what can we do differently to implement equitable practices at every level in each of our schools? The purpose of this event is to put focus on promoting a college and career going culture throughout the county from kindergarten through 12th grade, and to ensure that all students that graduate in San Diego, from Oceanside to Pine Valley to the South Bay, believe and know that they are college and career ready, and that they have access to numerous post-secondary options, such as a two-year or a four-year college, trade or vocational school, the military, or even the world of work. So what does it mean to be college and career ready? Well, the next generation of school accountability, a blueprint for raising high school achievement and graduation rates defines both as this. College ready means that a high school graduate has the reading, the writing and the math knowledge and skills to qualify for and succeed in entry level credit bearing college degree courses without the need for remedial classes. And career ready means that high school graduates can read, comprehend, interpret, and analyze complex technical materials, can use mathematics to solve problems in the workplace, and can pass a state approved industry certificate or licensure exam in their field. When we think about what it means for our students to be college and career ready, it encompasses all aspects of education. The responsibilities do not just fall on you, the hands of the school counselors. It is a shared responsibility amongst all educators. However, school counselors can lead this work and many of you already do. When we break it down into a systemic K through 12 approach, we can see how important it is to have school counselors and educators educating programs in the college and career domain at every level. For our elementary school counselors, our responsibilities are to create awareness, knowledge, and skills that lay the foundation for academic rigor and social development necessary for college and career readiness, and to prepare our students for what's to happen in middle school. 
Our middle school counselors create opportunities to explore and deep, deep in college and career knowledge and skills necessary for academic planning and goal setting and get them ready for ninth grade. And then in high school, we want to create college and career pathways that promote full implementation of personal goals that ensure the widest range of future life options. So we have a lot of work to do and we have a lot of work to do at every school level. It's not just work that starts once a student gets to high school. So what we hope to achieve today is that you can either develop, improve upon, or try something new to take college and career readiness to the next level on each of your campuses. We all have a part. We have workshops this afternoon presented by school counselors and community leaders who are doing this work and they are doing it well. And they are sharing their ideas and resources. Collect and learn from them. We have a panel of college students and college graduates following this session to share their personal stories about their pre-college experiences and why the support of at least one caring adult in their lives played such an important role in, in the success of where they are today. Listen, reflect, and understand your role and the impact that you have. And today we will celebrate what seems to be more of an emphasis on financial aid and college access at the high school level. However, think and know about what we can be more proactive in with our littles to help them dream and know that college is an option before they get to high school. We all need to understand our roles and responsibilities at all levels. So to officially kick off this event, I am thrilled to welcome Dr. Paul Goffold, our San Diego County Superintendent. Thank you so much, Tanya. Great job. Welcome, everyone. Uh, what an honor and privilege to be here today. Um, good morning again. Welcome to our county's first kickoff to college and career readiness. And uh, I know we're all here today because we're passionate about every student graduating high school with options. And, and I mean that sincerely. Here at uh, San Diego County Office of Ed, we are deeply committed to ensuring that all students are graduating high school with options. That means being eligible to apply to a four-year, a two-year, going into the trade or the world of work. Regardless of what that is, we believe that every student should be in a position where they can choose the best path for their future uh, and then not be limited by the systemic structures that are dictated for them. We will also want to ensure we get to 100% FAFSA and CADA completion. Uh, we're challenging ourselves internally with our students and, and you so that we can be intentional about reaching every child, particularly our most vulnerable in completing these applications so that our students can leverage every opportunity and resource that is available to them. The research on this is clear. Students who complete these applications are much more likely to enroll in college than those who do not. And if you haven't already, I hope you read through our SDCOE Equity Blueprint for Action. Uh, the blueprint outlines practices, actions to help us better support our historically underserved student groups and can be an incredible resource and a perfect example of listening and learning from our students, parents, staff, and community members. Uh, we are so grateful you're here today uh, taking advantage of the supports to increase college going and career ready culture on your campuses where the entire st staff works together toward a common goal. Uh, the schools and districts that have established a strong college career going culture have done so because their entire staff and community was involved from the superintendent to the principal to the teachers, school counselors, classified employees. Uh, we already know that school counselors are a critical piece to this and can lead the charge and many of you already are. And that's great news because beginning in the 22-23 school year districts and schools will have to confirm that all high school seniors complete a financial aid application or sign an opt-out waiver. Uh, so we need to prepare for AB 132 financial aid application completion requirement now. And, and not because it will become a state right way uh, requirement, but because this is simply the right thing to do. Um, I wanna work with you to ensure we meet this requirement now and ensure our students and families know and have access to financial aid. If anyone can do it, it's this group of caring school counselors and educators who are dedicated to supporting our students. Last year, our county had a 50% completion rate, FAFSA, California Dream App applications. Year before it was 51%. And uh, that's impressive considering the environment challenges we have been faced with now in our third year, school year of disruption. And those numbers 
are aligned and stack up with statewide average, but I think you would all agree that we can do better. We've got work to do, but I know I'm talking to a group of people who went above and beyond to connect with and reach families and students during these unprecedented times. And this becomes even more important when you think about students who are experiencing homelessness and those in our foster care system. Last year, 43 of 83 students who were in foster care in our county completed the FAFSA or the California Dream Act application. That's 53%, a 23% increase from the last year, earning our county a most improved county award from the John Burton Advocates for Youth, which came with cash incentives for our students graduating in 2022. And while we take the time to celebrate this, we believe anything short of 100% should be cause for concern. Completing financial aid applications can provide our foster youth the opportunity to earn a college degree, gainful employment, and social mobility. We have to get this right. We should not settle for anything less than 100% FAFSA or CADA completion this year, and I know we can do this. Our students deserve every opportunity to meet and exceed their potential, and they need our help. Our office stands ready and willing to do whatever it takes to support you, and we encourage you to reach out to Tanya Bullett, our San Diego County Office of Education Counselor, to assist you and our districts at any time. I also want to say congratulations to the schools and districts being honored for winning the San Diego County Race to Submit Challenge. Every FAFSA or CADA application uh, completion is a win, and these eight schools and two districts have done a stellar job. I also hope you come away with today's events inspired, prepared with the information tools that you need to build a college and career going culture from kindergarten to 12th grade. And as you will hear later, several of our students are joining us for a panel at 1015 today to share their experiences applying to colleges, financial aid process, and the importance of having adults in their lives to support them through this. Our students tell powerful stories. We need to listen, learn, and do everything we can to better support them. In closing, on behalf of our Board of Education, San Diego County Office of Education, I wanna thank you for your leadership, for making the learning today a priority, and I can't wait to see the impact of your work. Uh, thank you for everything you do, particularly in these challenging times to support our kids because they've never needed us more than ever. Appreciate you very much. Have a great conference. Thanks for all you do. Thank you so much, Dr. Gothold, for taking the time to be here today and to give us a few welcoming words. I can say that when I first uh, was introduced to you, it was so clear that increasing college access and FAFSA and CADA completion rates, especially for our underrepresented student populations, was something that you were clearly and deeply passionate about. So we are taking your charge and we're going to move forward. Um, and just having you understand and appreciate what school counselors do and the important roles that they play, I have to say it means so much to our profession. So thank you so much. We're here to support you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. So my why. So when I think about where my passion came from for increasing this work um, with our students, I really have two different perspectives in which I came from. Why this work is so important to me, it well, really stems from when my own children were going through high school and when I really became a parent and started to understand and look at and do and help my child through the college application and the financial aid system. I really didn't know how complicated and complex it was until I started actively doing them. And when I think back to when my son was a senior in high school, I thought I had it all together. How lucky was he to have a high school counselor as a mom to help him get through the college application and financial aid process? Well, what I thought was going to be a good thing really empowered me as I was going through this process and, and really thinking about how would a high school student really know how to get this all done? I also didn't realize that once a student says yes and they commit to a college, that I thought that was it. I was naive to know that this process continues. And if our high school students aren't checking their emails, if our high school students aren't getting their money in for housing, that they are going to miss out on opportunities to actually take their first step on a college campus. When I started to see how all of these pieces came into play with my own family and my own son in our situation, I started to get a little angry. 
and a little bit more um, pursuant in advocating for our students who didn't have a parent, yet alone a high school counselor in their family. I really started to think about how would they know to check their email? How would they know about these additional things that are put in place? And if their family or parent isn't supporting or helping them through the process, how can I do better as a school counselor to ensure that that everybody has equitable access and that we are doing this work for all? So as a parent, when I came back after my son graduated from high school in 2017, and after that summer, when I started to learn way more about this process than I thought was there, I really came back on fire on fire to help the next class of seniors really understand the importance of one, the financial aid process and the college application process and the steps that they needed to take. Also knew that we need to get our parents on board and we needed to have more educational courses for them sharing our experiences as parents with a counseling hat to help them get through this process so that their students could be more successful. So as you can see, my son graduated. He was blessed to have both of his parents work at the high school that he graduated from. He actually did okay. He, he was okay with that. My second child was very different. And by the way, my first child, he was the, the model student that as a school counselor, they follow the A through G, they take the AP classes, they take the SAT, they follow all the steps that we seem to have on a to-do checklist for our kids that this is what they need to do in order to um, apply to college. My other son was more of a challenge. And I have to say my, my youngest son was probably more of your traditional high school student and the one that's in the middle. And so with my, high, with my uh, second child, Jake, he was not on the path to go to a high school that was in your traditional method. He really wanted a smaller environment. And I have to say that the reason why he didn't go to the high school where both of his parents were at was because he needed a different fit. And what I mean by that is we were fortunate that he found his passion and his career path, so to speak, in middle school. And this is why I appreciate all the work that our middle school counselors are doing to prepare our students for high school. I was on the receiving end of that as a high school counselor, but then as a parent of a child who was not motivated to go to school, as soon as he signed up for a video production elective in seventh grade, everything changed for him. And he started to see the value of education and the steps he needed to take to pursue that career once he graduated from high school. The first picture is his eighth grade year. In the spring of that year, he submitted a video which got him all the way up to the county level for recognition. That not only boosted his confidence, but it gave him reason for ninth grade to know what he wanted to accomplish and what he wanted to do and the goals and the things he had to pursue in order to uh, one day go to film college. And so I say that because all of our kids are different and all of them have a different career path. And these start not in high school, they start when they're young. And so as counselors, what an awesome responsibility we have to ensure that we are helping them find that. So when I think about my why and the pursuant of ensuring that we are eliminating some of these barriers, I told you earlier that I came on fire coming back after my son um, had stepped foot onto campus at, at UC Irvine, I wanted to do better. I wanted to do better as a school counselor to one, make sure that everybody was completing the FAFSA or at least knew about it. And so we literally threw out there FAFSA Fridays. Now I know I'm missing the word CADA. So I just want to put that out there. My disclaimer, my bad, I learned. And the following year, we made sure it was financial aid Fridays. But the first year, we just put it out there just to bring awareness to it. I have to say that every Friday when we go into a senior class, just to share someone who had entered our drawing because they had completed the FAFSA and could show proof that every Friday when we go out and announce our winners in senior classes, that it started to build. And then it got to a point where I would step foot into a class on a Friday and they're, and they're like, what day is it? It's FAFSA Friday. So the excitement grew. And not only 
did this come from our students, but then our teachers started to get on board. Our teachers started to have conversations with their students. And we saw a shift uh, in our culture on our campus for the importance of why it was so critical for students to complete the FAFSA. So I share my why because we all have a different reason why we're passionate for this work. Some of you might be first generation. Some of you may have had that one adult or that school counselor that really helped you through this process. We all have a different reason for why uh, this work is so critical. And I encourage you to really take a look at that and investigate it so that you can understand where your passion is coming from. And if you don't have a why, it's time to figure it out because we need to make sure that this, is, this work is continuing. So as Dr. Goffold mentioned, we had a race to submit challenge. Now the race to submit stems from what is happening at the state level. And we modeled our program after what the state is doing to see what we can do in San Diego County to increase our FAFSA and, and CADA rates. So in the fall of 2019, SDCUE kicked off the very first San Diego County Race to Submit Challenge to encourage our districts and high schools to set goals to complete and increase their completion rates. So what we also started was a committee. And you can see from this list of folks that we have people from all over. What I found and what I was hearing and who I was connecting with, we had all kinds of people doing wonderful work but working in silos. And so we brought the, that energy together and it was amazing. In fact, if any of you are out there would like to be a part of this committee to continue the, moving this work forward, we welcome you. So we have district leaders involved. We have our uh, Mindy and Sarah who represent and support our foster youth and homeless. We also have Amy on board and she's doing a workshop as well as Mindy and Sarah. She works with our undocumented youth. We also have Deborah Maxey, our CSAC commissioner, who is telling us what's happening at the state level and encouraging on um, things that we can do here at the local level. We also have Linda Dougherty. If you haven't met Linda, you don't know what you're missing. She is energy and she is really wanting to increase this work. And then if you haven't heard of the Carpe Network, Edgar and Rodrigo are doing phenomenal work with schools and some in our county to increase FAFSA rates as well, supporting them through the whole process along the way. So we have all of these people that are committed and dedicated to really increasing and improving this work so that no child is left behind. And I don't like to say that, we all know where that stems from, but I'm just gonna say it, we don't want anybody to be behind or fall through the cracks. So to be honest, I knew that when we put this challenge out that our school counselors would be competitive. However, your leaders have taken it to another level. And so I want to show you who our champions are and hear from some of them as to why this work was so important.
All right. So I hope that gives you some perspective as to what's happening in our county. Two weeks ago, I went out to all of the schools to present their banners, and I had only given some of them one day notice. And through that one day notice, they were able to get their superintendent, their principals, their school counseling team, people at the district level to come and support them in this achievement. And when you have that support from the top on down, which is why I was so appreciative that Dr. Gothel was here today, you have people that believe in this mission and it's higher than you think. And so sometimes you can feel like you're in this work alone. However, you're not, you have support. And so through the Races Submit program, like I said, you are a competitive group of people. And I could tell that when I read and shared some of the bright spots with the schools that were receiving the awards, that they were challenged to do better in the future. And they really wanted to improve upon where they were at this year. So what we did to break down, so you saw things flashing across the screen pretty quickly. So I'm gonna just slow it down because these are really incredible things to share. So our first category, category one, is broken down with an enrollment of 99 seniors in the class of 20, 2021 or less. So these are our smaller schools, our alternative programs that uh, would be in this category. And so our highest increase from the previous year in FAFSA and CADA completions was option secondary school with a 69% increase. And actually what you don't see is that on that day, all of his students were there to listen and celebrate the work of a school counselor who was doing all this work. And also very humble in that he wanted to make sure that this is a team effort. And we know that when you have a team of people pulling through and doing this work, you're gonna be more successful. Also, we had a tie with both Option Secondary School as well as East Village Middle College completing or having 100% of FAFSA and CADA completions amongst their students. In fact, when talking with East Village Middle College, they had an increase and they had above a 100%. And I asked, how is that possible? And because they're a middle college, they also have juniors. And some of the juniors just really pushed through and graduated early. So that's why they saw um, their rate really uh, increase. There were some additional achievements that I wanna share in category one. First of all, Oasis High, another alternative program in the Fallbrook Union School District, was in sixth place on the leaderboard and had a 32% increase over 2020 in FAFSA and CADA completions. And a 17% increase in Cal Grant recipients, which means when you see that, that's because their students were able to submit the FAFSA or CADA by the March 2nd deadline. And we saw this in many, of our, in many of our schools. And so it was definitely a highlight because we know last year was so difficult and so challenging for many of you. Um, there are lots of bright spots that we need to share. Bonzo High also had a 24% increase in completions and a 28% increase in Cal Grant recipients. And 17 schools out of 35 in this category increased their FAFSA and CADA completion rates, almost half. And 14 schools increased their total number in Cal Grant recipients with Alta Vista High, a continuation program in Vista Unified, having the highest increase of 60%. Again, phenomenal work. We also had seven schools increase both their FAFSA and CADA completions in Cal Grant recipients. So as you can see there, we had a lot of people doing this work despite the challenges that you were all faced. So category two, category two are schools with an enrollment of 100 to 299 seniors. In this category, High Tech High Chula Vista had the highest increase in FAFSA CADA completions with 14%. And the highest percentage of FAFSA CADA completions was High Tech High Media Arts with 91%. And you saw in the video, our counselors from High Tech High Media Arts, that was an impromptu uh, question by a teacher who happened to be in the area where I was presenting the banner. He had all of his ninth graders there and he wanted them to know what the FAFSA was and the CADA was, and he wanted them to hear it and see what uh, their school had accomplished. So I thought that was a great, great impromptu plug that had to be featured in the video. 
And so what are some additional achievements out there in category two? Well, seven schools out of 24 in this category increased their FAFSA K to completion rates. 17 schools increased their total number of Cal Grant recipients with Valley High Continuation and Escondido having the highest increase of 47%. And then five schools increased both their FAFSA and K to completions and their Cal Grant recipients. So again, awesome work. Category three is an enrollment of 300 to 499 seniors. In category three, the highest increase in FAFSA and CADA completions was University City High School with 11%. And then the highest percentage of FAFSA CADA completions was 75% from Mission Vista High School and Vista Unified. Again, great work and great improvements. In this category, eight schools increased their FAFSA and CADA completion rates. 17 schools increased their total number of Cal Grant recipients <clears throat> with Mount Miguel High School in the Grossmont Union High School District having the highest increase of 20%. And two schools increased both FAFSA and CADA completions and Cal Grant recipients, University High School and Southwest High School. Again, congratulations to all of you on this work. And then category four, with schools of an enrollment of 500 plus seniors, they are out there, we had the highest increase in FAFSA and CADA completions by Scripps Ranch High School with 15%. And then we had a tie at the highest percentage of FAFSA CADA completions of 73% by both Scripps Ranch High School and San Marcos. I even tried to look at the tiniest thing to see if one had inched above another and it wasn't a whole person to make it uh, worthy of awarding anybody above the other. So it was a tie. Again, phenomenal work. And in Scripps Ranch and in talking with the counselors, they decided they needed to focus on students who uh, were applying for the FAFSA or completing the FAFSA because they knew that was the way to merit scholarships. That was the way to other um, op institutional grants or funding. So they really relied on um, encouraging their students to apply, even though they may not qualify for financial aid. So again, it's whatever uh, approach you need to take that best fits the student populations at your schools that's what you have to figure out in order to be successful. And in this category, 12 out of 29 increased their FAFSA and CADA completion rates. 14 schools increased their total number of Cal Grant recipients with Escondido High School having the highest increase of 10%. And then three schools increased both their FAFSA and CADA completions and Cal Grant recipients. And then I have to do a shout out to San Marcos High School because for the third year in a row, they, it was just announced that they received the 2021 California State Race to Submit Award um, for, for uh, high schools with 800 or more students. And as I was at San Marcos High School um, presenting their banner, they had just come, all the counselors were racing in between classes because they were doing presentations to their seniors on financial aid and college applications. And I was told that this year they have 910 seniors. So you can imagine that at 73% or at whatever percentage they're gonna achieve this year, they are reaching a lot of students. So this work by all of you and the increase in Cal Grant recipients alone is a win for San Diego County because more students are receiving that financial aid so that they can go to college. And then we have our district champions. So this year, our small district of 1,999 seniors or less is San Marcos Unified High School District with a 66% completion rate. Now you're probably saying, you just said San Marcos High School has 910 students. Exactly. There's also Mission Hills High School. And so there's only two schools in their district. So they're just under that to be in the small district category. And then our large district of 2,000 seniors or more was San Diego Unified School District with 59%. And they also had a 1% increase overall in Cal Grants. And San Diego Unified is the second largest school district in our state. So again, amazing and awesome work and congratulations to all of you. And additional achievements in our district category was that in the small district, Bonzel Unified, 
increase, increase their FAFSA and CADA completion rates by 28% and increased 31% in Cal Grant recipients, huge. And then in our large district, Escondido Union had a 4% increase in Cal Grant recipients. And as Dr. Goffle mentioned, our foster youth completion rate also increased. So during a year of COVID, when we're having to do this work virtually and remotely, it actually worked out to benefit our foster youth. And in talking to Mindy from the San Diego County Office of Ed, she was able to share that last year, 53% of our students who were in foster care in San Diego County completed the FAFSA or the California Dream Act, a 23% increase from 2020. And they also earned the Most Improved County Award from John Burton Advocates for Youth. So this work is continuing at all levels. We also have great work happening with our undocumented youth and in completing the CADA as well. So as a county, how did we fare? So in 2020, when the pandemic started, we had 51%. And remember, the pandemic started after March 2nd, and that's when schools closed. And so in 2020, we had a 51% um, completion rate, which was uh, less than what was happening in California public schools across the state. So we knew we had work to do. But then in 2021, we only went down 1%. And so I consider this a complete win that through the odds, through the challenges, through the barriers, you got your students and families through this process. And in doing so, you opened up doors, you helped inspire students and you really kept their dreams moving forward. And so the work we have to do next year, yes, we can all set a goal we all need to look at our own data. We all need to figure out what we can do to increase our FAFSA and CADA completion rates. So Dr. Gothold also mentioned AB 132, which is the financial aid application completion requirement that will go into place in the 2022-23 academic year. So many of you, you've already got this going. You already know what you want to and what you need to do. But for those who are just trying to figure out this financial aid process, it all starts somewhere. And so make this be the year in which you start so that when you get to next school year, you have your process in place. You know what you wanna do, but you also are reaching all students, creating equitable practices so that all of your students are completing a financial aid application or an opt-out waiver. And I've provided all the links to the verbiage for AB 132 in a document that I'm gonna share in just a second. So where do we go from here? And I love this quote, the key to success is action and the essential in action is perseverance. When we think about what we need to do to move forward, we need to look at our data, we need to strategize and set a goal to ensure that our students have post-secondary options and that they are college and career ready. So how can you build upon a college and career culture at your school? And how can you get your staff and administrators involved at all levels, elementary, middle, and high school? So we know that there's a lot of work to do, but we are all in it together. And there are lots of ways that we can support each other through this work. So one area where we can do that is by collaborating, working together, and we put together this, the committee has put together this financial aid resources document, which I believe Zaret is putting into the chat for you to um, have access to. We will also have this posted on our website um, as well, but this is just a starting point. We know that there are many resources that are out there, but this is just to kind of kick things off and get you started with some ideas and some ways to move this forward. Some of you may be at a point where nothing like this has really ever happened, or maybe you just graduated from your graduate program and now you're like, okay, what do I need to do? I'm, or you might only be the one counselor at your school. So there are numerous resources that you can tap into. I'm also making sure that you have the right people that you can connect with, whether it be Mindy or Sarah with Foster Youth or Amy with students without borders to help you, without limits, excuse me, to help you with our undocumented youth. You have support in areas where you might feel uncomfortable leading a workshop on. There are people that do it and do it well and can help you through that process. Just as long as we're taking a step forward, that's all we're asking. 
So we will also be providing a resource with college and career resources for school counselors because we know that there's a lot of them floating around as well. So we want to compile it into one document that we can start to keep tabs on so that you have everything you need in one resource. So I know that's a lot. I hope that you have felt inspired and I really encourage you to, to take a look and attend some of these other workshops that we have going on today. Like I said, they're all led by school counselors in San Diego County and by community members that are here um, in our county to support your schools through increasing your FAFSA and cater rates to helping you create more of a college going culture to give you ideas of what to do with those littles in kindergarten on up. So please take advantage of this. We do have, um, I know that our first document that was emailed out might have been a little challenging to click through some of the links. So we're putting another one into the chat. So you have direct access to all of the workshops and the links that you need, but please take time to come. Our student panel will kick off today at 1030 and will run until 1130. And we have eight students who are very excited to come on and share their experiences with you. And they're from all over the county and they're attending really amazing schools. So again, to keep that momentum moving forward, to learn from their experiences and what you can do better in your practice, I think is always a win. So before I tap out and give you some time, looks like you have 15 minutes. Um, actually, you have 45 minutes before our next session to answer your emails grab a glass of water or a cup of coffee, um, run to the restroom or support. I know some of you have students that are probably knocking on your door. Um, so we want to give you that, that time, but please make sure that uh, you take advantage of what's offered here today. And if for some reason, because I know, I know the life of the school counselor, you may not be able to attend a workshop. All of these will be recorded and posted on our school counselor website, which will just give us two to three days to make sure we get all those links up. So again, thank you for being here. I really appreciate your time. And I do wanna give a shout out, you don't see them, but Zarette and Jose on the back end are golden and they are the ones that are the true support uh, for me and they make this seamless and easy. And so I'm just so grateful and thankful to them. So thank you for being here today and for attending our first kickoff, our general session, and we hope to see you um, as we move throughout the day. Thanks again.